Honourable members, I have received the following communication from His Excellency the Administrator. I desire to inform the House of Representatives that I have received a letter dated 2 August 2015 from the Honourable Bronwyn Bishop MP tendering her resignation as Speaker of the House of Representatives and that I have accepted her resignation. Accordingly, I invite the House to elect a new Speaker. The next business of the House is the election of a Speaker. Is there a nomination for Speaker? The member for Barker. Casey, do take the chair of this House as Speaker. First uh, elected in 2001, uh, the member for Casey's long years of dedicated service in this House, in our view, will equip him well to be an outstanding Speaker of this Parliament. As an electoral neighbour to my electorate of Deakin, I've had the absolute privilege of working very, very closely with the member for Casey, and in doing so, have seen firsthand the understanding and respect that the honourable member has for our parliament and its traditions and conventions. The member for Casey has been a fearless advocate for his electorate and has always been dependable and trustworthy. And I must say that on a personal level, he's extraordinarily honest, perhaps with one exception. Anyone who knows Tony knows he's an absolute rev head. <laughs> and he's a Holden man through and through. And he and I have had many arguments being a Ford man myself. But he's honest to a fault with one exception, and I'm very sorry, Tony. Um, my message to Pam, his wonderful wife, is there's been many, many occasions where Tony's purchased a car first and told you second, Pam. <laughs> but more importantly, all of us who know the member for Casey know that he's got a keen intellect, is very well respected by his colleagues on both sides of the chamber, and I'm therefore extraordinarily confident that Tony Smith has the experience, temperament and strength necessary to instil respect and trust in our parliamentary institutions. So it's a great honour for me to be able to nominate Tony Smith, member for Casey, as Speaker. And my apologies to the member for Deakin. Uh, is the motion seconded? I call the member for Robertson. I'm happy to second this nomination. The member for Casey has been known to me since 2013 as both a friend and a colleague. And I can say, as one of the newer members of this place, that I'm pleased to endorse his, uh, his nomination for Speaker of this House, knowing him as a very strong man of values, a very strong man of integrity, a man who um, is prepared to serve not only his constituency and his party, but indeed members of this House as well. He is a man who is incredibly friendly and, dare I say it, in this place, a man who is also known for his kindness. I uh, must endorse the, the comments by the member for Deakin that uh, he is indeed a very strong family man, man and does talk lovingly of, of both Pam and his wife. But I must, uh, sorry, and, and, his, and his family. <laughs> if there was going to be a clangor, Mr. Clark, it would be that. <laughs> Having said that, he is a man who will uphold the tradition of this house. He is, a, he is a great man who will uphold the tradition of this house. And if we were asking for a man, if we were asking for a nominee of this, uh, uh, to, to serve as speaker, who will actually, um, who will actually uphold not only tr the traditions but rule this place without fear or favour, it would be a man, a great Carlton man, who would ask to have as his nominee a third-generation Collingwood fan. So it, was, it is with great pleasure that I do second the nomination of the member for Casey. Does the member accept the nomination? I accept. Is there any further proposal? The time for proposals has expired. I declare that the honourable member proposed, Mr Smith, has been elected as speaker.
express my grateful thanks for the high honour the House has been pleased to confer on me. On behalf of the government, may I extend to you our congratulations on assuming this high and important office. Uh, as the Speaker, you, sir, are the custodian of the traditions of this House. Your job is to maintain order in this House by commanding the respect of both sides of the chamber. Uh, I am confident, based on our friendship and comradeship going back some quarter of a century that this is exactly what you will do. Uh, may I say, uh, Mr Speaker, that uh, in the course of your 15-year parliamentary career uh, you have met with some disappointments. It's precisely because uh, you have met with triumph and disaster and treated both those impostors the same that you have uh, so strongly commanded uh, a uh, a majority inside the Liberal Party room and why you have been elected uh, unopposed here in this chamber. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, just a word, if I may, on the member for McKellar. Uh, it should be said of the member for McKellar that despite some admitted errors of judgment, she has served this parliament, our country, her party with dedication and distinction for over 30 years. She has been a warrior for the causes that she believed in. I should also observe, Mr Speaker, that at the close of a very difficult week in his prime ministership, uh, John Howard said, he said, politics is a hard and unforgiving business, but it is amongst the highest and noblest forms of public service. May all of us conduct ourselves so that the public that we serve will better appreciate that in the days and weeks and years to come. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of the Opposition, congratulations. And for all our clashes with the former Speaker, we wish her well. Mr Speaker, you've been chosen by your peers as the first officer of the parliament upholding a tradition that began with the parliament seven centuries ago. And you bring to this position a proud record of advocating for a more accountable, more representative Australian democracy, particular, particularly in your role as chairman of the Joint Committee on Electoral Matters. I'm sure this is a proud day for you and your family. Your elevation brings an opportunity actually for all of us in this place to reflect on our behaviour and how this chamber operates. Let us begin by restoring a, ro a role of independence to the job of Speaker. Serving as a Speaker is a privilege, not a prize, a responsibility, not a reward. Regardless of previous political allegiance, we welcome the Speaker's commitment not to attend their party rooms meetings. And today is a chance to lift the standards of this parliament to return them to a level which Australians rightly expect of their representatives, not just improving behaviour, but a lift in the standard of accountability. Mr Speaker, much of this challenge falls upon your shoulders. You can make this a place where straightforward questions get straightforward answers, where the words direct relevance carry real meaning, where the Speaker manages debate without seeking to participate in it, and we're standing orders, including 94A, are applied fairly to both sides of the House. I call, in addition, if I might, upon the Prime Minister, in this spirit of change, to consider restoring supplementary questions and genuine scrutiny. But Mr. Speaker, today, Mr. Speaker, today we move from a proud supporter of the Warringah Rats to the Carlton Blues. For whatever code we follow, I believe that the best umpires are the ones that you don't notice. Let this be the story of your speakership, 
an impartial officer serving an accountable parliament. Well done and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of the National Party and the leader of the National's Warren Trust, who is returning from uh, parliamentary business representing the Prime Minister, I congratulate you on your election as Speaker. And it gives me uh, particular pleasure in the fact that you are a member of the class of 2001, of which I'm a member. And it is great to see a member of the class of 2001 uh, being elected to the high office of Speaker. As you have distinguished yourself over many years as an excellent parliamentarian and a dedicated servant of your electorate. You have provided great service on the Joint Standing <coughs> Committee on Electoral Matters. You have been a great member indeed. Your extensive experience in this parliament, no doubt, has given you a great understanding and familiarity of the role of Speaker, which you will be undertaking in the time ahead, Madam Speaker, <coughs> Mr Speaker. And I must say, I must say, I would draw your attention that the member for Wakefield is probably a. <laughs> preparing to uh, preparing a strategy for uh, question time going forward. <laughs> and I would, I would hope that you will uh, deal with him firmly mm. and fairly, Mr. Speaker. But you have made a great contribution to this Parliament in your service so far, and I certainly wish you well. Uh, in your role as Speaker, you will be strongly assisted by an able deputy in the member for Maranoa, who has served this parliament over many years and has fulfilled the role of uh, Deputy Speaker with distinction. So, uh, Speaker, I wish you well on behalf of the Nationals uh, in your time as Speaker. The Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, I'm delighted to be able to join with the previous speakers in congratulating you on your elevation. I have no doubt that you will bring uh, dignity and goodwill to the very important office that you've been elected to today. Um, I'd also like to thank the member for McKellar for her long service to this parliament uh, in the role of Speaker and as a minister, shadow minister and a fierce representative of the people of Mackellar. Um, I think I was perhaps at the end the only person uh, still barracking for the member for Maranoa. It was a one-person team, um, but we're very pleased to know that he'll still continue his wonderful um, uh, work as Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much for your service to date and in the future as well. The Manager of Government Business. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, can I congratulate you on behalf of uh, the government and as Leader of the House on your election as Speaker today. Uh, as most members in this House would know, uh, the new Speaker and I have been friends for our entire political careers, right back to university days. Uh, we've been through many, many trials and tribulations and many successes together over the course of those 30 years. Uh, knowing each other from student politics right through to the current day, and I look forward very much to his role as Speaker, a, young, a very young Speaker. I'm not sure that I have served in the House with such a young Speaker before. Steve Martin might be the closest to that, so it'll be an interesting uh, image for the Parliament and uh, a refreshing one at that. So congratulations to uh, Tony Smith. Uh, the member for Casey for his election today, and I look forward to working closely with him uh, to continue to have a robust parliament uh, that debates the issues, that uncovers what needs to be uncovered, and makes sure that we have good government uh, for the most uh, people most of the time. Also, can I briefly pay tribute to the member for McKellar, uh, the previous speaker, who I in fact uh, seconded her nomination uh, two years ago to be speaker. Uh, she, has been, she has been felled in uh, most unfair circumstances by uh, politics uh, today. Uh, I listened very carefully to the remarks of the uh, Leader of the Opposition, the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, uh, noticing their now very generous remarks about the member for McKellar. I'm reminded of their not so generous remarks not very long ago, Madam Speaker. But uh, to the former Madam Speaker, I do pay tribute to you as the Speaker. I think you uh, have been a great uh, political figure over your 30-year career in Australian politics. I think you'll be remembered that way always as being a great advocate for the causes in which you believed, which happily are the causes of this side 
of the House. Uh, for women in Parliament, you have been a beacon of strength and fortitude, never flagging, despite the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. And I pay you the most fulsome tribute for the contribution you've made to Australian public life. The Manager of Opposition Business. Thanks very much, Speaker. Uh, congratulations on your appointment. Uh, and if I may briefly, notwithstanding the disagreements obviously that the member for McKellar and I had in her role as Speaker, it has always been acknowledged her role as a fearless warrior for her side of politics. And Parliament is well served having people within it who hold views and hold them fearlessly in this Parliament, and we wish her well in that. Uh, for yourself in the role as Speaker, uh, can I say that there will be moments over the next few weeks, no doubt, where both government and opposition work out the parameters as to how you will apply the standing orders. Uh, the government from the perspective of the rules you put on questions, the opposition from the perspective of the rules that you apply on answers and in particular on direct relevance. Uh, but within that, if we end up with a situation where the public debate is about the policy rather than the procedure, that it is about the Australian people rather than each other, then the parliament will have been well served. The member for Melbourne. Thank you, Speaker. Congratulations on behalf of the Greens on your elevation. I don't know whether this is um, something that you'll like me saying or not, but I do know that colleagues who've worked with you on the Joint Standing Committee think uh, very highly of you. Uh, perhaps that's a kiss of death coming from the Greens, but nonetheless I convey it and uh, know that there is, from our side, uh, significant respect and support for you in your role. To the extent that you will now have your work cut out for you to restore some impartiality to the role and integrity and respect for this place. You have our full support. One thing that uh, I would like to remind you in your new role is that over 20 per cent of Australians don't vote for either Labor or the Coalition. And we're represented up here in this corner. So when you look to one side and then to the other, please remember to look down the middle as well. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Thank you. Can I uh, thank everyone for their generous remarks. I just want to make a, a few remarks in response. Uh, can I, as everyone has done in this debate, uh, recognise uh, the member for McCalla, who I've known for nearly 30 years, who's been a wonderful servant uh, of our party. I want to recognise her at the outset. Can I thank the House for the confidence you've placed in me? There's no greater honour within the parliament to be elected uh, by one's peers. I'm a servant of this House and all of its members. There is, however, a mutual obligation between presiding officers and individual members. I want to say at the outset I'll give a fair go to all on the floor of this chamber. But in return, I do expect a level of discourse that reflects that. Parliament is a robust place. It should be a robust place. It is where we battle our view of a better Australia. It is the arena for the battle of ideas and ideals. I make that point because often people say Parliament shouldn't be robust. It should, but it needn't be rude and it needn't be loud. And that is something I'd like to see improve. I can't do that, but together we all can. And I wanted to make that point at the opening. I also want to say I have many friends in this chamber uh, I have, Prime Minister, some friends on the other side. Uh, the, the members. <laughs> it, it, wa it wasn't part of my pitch, that's true. <laughs> uh, I've known the member for Carayo for a very long period of time. I've known the member for Batman for a very long period of time. We're at, we're at university together. And they know, I'll be fair, 
They also know that I'll bring to this place, to the best of my ability, <laughs> uh, a better parliament. And a better parliament is something we should all be striving for. Just a couple of other points. I am going to make it a practice periodically to meet with the Leader of the House, the Manager of Opposition Business and independent members to discuss uh, the operation of Parliament. And I'll have more to say, that, more to say on that uh, during the course of this fortnight. I think that will be a practical forum uh, for me to convey my expectations to representatives of all groupings uh, within this place. It can be a forum where Parliament's expectations of my office can also be conveyed and it will serve as a mechanism for some mutual accountability. Can I reiterate uh, that I will not be attending weekly party meetings? Uh, I've said that in discussions with colleagues during the course of the last seven days. It's my view that the Speaker should not only be, but also should be seen to be, independent of the partisan day-to-day -day frame. I think the decision is symbolic, but it's also practical. Uh, my role and that of the president uh, in the other place uh, are unique. Of course, uh, the president of the Senate and myself have minister-like responsibilities for the respective chambers. Uh, and for the Department of Parliamentary Services, but we're not, of course, members of the executive. So in the execution of our responsibilities in relation to the administration of parliamentary departments and how they serve members and support this chamber, uh, the views uh, of the executive, of the opposition and of individual members will be given equal weight. Uh, I just want to say uh, a couple of other things of a uh, personal nature. I want to mention the former member for Casey and a former speaker, the Honourable Bob Halverson, uh, who I've known for many, many years, uh, who may be listening uh, to my remarks now. I want to thank my family, uh, my wife Pam, my mum, uh, and my two boys, Thomas and Angus. They found this last week Interesting. <laughs> uh, I heard Thomas telling someone Dad was on the phone a lot. <laughs> Angus found it exciting, but he was mostly interested that I still, despite busyness, collect the David Attenborough DVD at the milk bar each morning. <laughs> they will find this uh, very exciting. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to place on record my great appreciation uh, for the professionalism and the institutional knowledge of the clerks uh, that I will be utilising uh, to a great degree uh, as I serve in this role. I want to thank the Prime Minister uh, for his friendship and confidence. Uh, I want to thank him for appointing me to the chairmanship of the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters. It's a very important committee. It's a committee that's deepened my appreciation and the understanding uh, of our democracy and stoked even more interest on my behalf uh, in this parliament. Whilst today uh, is a humbling day for me, uh, it is also a sad day for so many in this chamber. because. When we left here at the end of the last sitting, there were 150 of us. And we will pay tribute to the late Don Randall uh, during the course of today. I want to extend my heartfelt condolences to his family. I sat next to, John, uh, to Don in the last parliament. And uh, when you sit next to someone uh, for three years, uh, particularly when it's someone from another state, you get to know a lot about them and their interests. And uh, can I say he was a, a friend. Uh, he called it as he saw it. 
Uh, and to the former speakers, I can tell you, you didn't hear every interjection, <laughs> <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> can I again thank my colleagues uh, for the honour that's been bestowed upon me? Can I thank the parliament uh, for electing me unanimously to this role? And I'll do my very best. Thank you. Thank you. I have been advised that the Governor-General uh, will set a time for receiving you as Speaker of the House. Thank you, Prime Minister. The chair will be resumed at the ringing of the bells.